Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. My name is Jason Liebig and this is another episode of The Candy Geek. It's The Candy Geek. Or should I say The Candy Dork? All right, everybody, today I want to talk about the archaeology of confection. Now, this is my specialty. This is something I started doing nearly a decade ago. I became fascinated with how much uh, candy packaging and branding and history simply wasn't available anywhere online. You couldn't find it. I was looking for a photo, an image of a wrapper of one of my childhood favorite bars, the Marathon Bar, and the only image I, can find, I could find of it anywhere online was like that big. It was like you know, 10 pixels wide. It was, it was like a thumbnail. It was, it was just like maybe 50 pixels. You know, it was super tiny. It was pixelated. Um, and that helped sort of help me realize how much of this stuff was undocumented. So I always say um, the history of confection is a little bit like the fossil record for dinosaurs, where for everything you actually do know about or you can find an image of, there are 99 or 100 things that you don't know anything about or don't have any images of. Um, what's really interesting about it is how much of it just isn't known, how much isn't documented. The you crazy son of a bitch, you did. So I sort of, uh, through the course of time, um, have, have become known as the Indiana Jones of candy history. Uh, uh, obviously, we've come to the right men. Now. I think that makes me cool, but it probably just makes me a big dork. Trust me. Uh, I became fascinated with how much of this stuff wasn't out there, and today I want to talk about that. Um, because I just had a really awesome discovery in the realm of all this stuff. So, today I want to talk about the history of Kit Kat in America. To catch you up on a little bit of the history of Kit Kat, Kit Kat was created by the Roundtree Company in England. Um, Roundtree Chocolate Company. And they first created a product called Roundtree's Chocolate, uh, Round Trees Chocolate Crisp. Now Roundtree's Chocolate Crisp, blah, 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 Chocolate Crisp, um, was the Kit Kat we essentially know today. But that was invented in 1935. Two years later, just two years later, in 1937, they gave it the name Kit Kat, and that name stuck. So in the UK, Kit Kat was created in 1937. Now that went on for many, many years. And sometime in the 50s, probably in the 1950s, I'm still not sure. I actually do have a wrapper from that release, which is the only reason I even know the Kit Kat was distributed in the United States, because I have a wrapper clearly made for the United States market by Roundtree. And I'm gonna show that right here, right now. Um, so I know that, but I only know that. Not because I Googled it, you can't find that information online. I only know it because I found the wrapper. And I know in the mid 70s, Hershey got the license. This is pretty well documented, that part. They got the license and they started distributing the brand in the United States. But what about all that middle? What about that 15 to 20 year middle period? Well, recently, I figured it out. At least I figured out a big part of it. That's it. I acquired a lot of about 60 American rappers, or what I assumed were American rappers, from the late 60s to early 70s. Well, there were two rappers in there that I assumed at first were Canadian, a Canadian Kit Kat rapper and a Canadian Aero Bar rapper. However, I was completely wrong. <laughs> All of the information I have, I looked at these things and my first assessment was wrong. But then I really started looking at them and I started, well, wait a second, this Kit Kat wrapper, there's no, there's no French, there's no French and Canadian, French and English, excuse me, bilingual text. And then I realized, well, the weight was in ounces as we do here and there was a 10 cent price on it. And I was like, well, oh my gosh, this is actually somehow, against everything that I understood about this brand and, and its history here, this is actually an American, a USA Kit Kat wrapper from before the time when Hershey had it here. It blew my mind. I didn't know what to make of it. So I started going back over all my research and all the things I'd ever learned. And then I found an article from a 1968 candy trade publication, which explained that at that point, Roundtree had already been distributing a number of its brands in the United States. And then I found that Roundtree had a New York office at that time. So Roundtree was actually making efforts to get their products into the New York market in the 1960s. However, in 1968, 
they decided to sort of hand off some of that distribution work to Philip Morris. Now, Philip Morris, for those of you who don't know, is a cigarette manufacturer and distributor. They're very big in that, and I think they've got their hands in a lot of different businesses. However, this made a lot of sense for Roundtree. Roundtree did not know the brokers or the distribution schemes in the United States. They knew the UK. They didn't have the relationships. So I think they looked at Philip Morris and they said, listen, we can make a deal with these guys. Philip Morris was already getting into the mom and pop shops. Now, the thing to understand, in the 1960s, we didn't have these big chain, uh, chain stores and retail outlets like we have now. Most people were doing their shopping at smaller mom and pop shops. So making a deal with Philip Morris for Roundtree made sense. It also made sense for Philip Morris because they had more product to sell and it was unique product and appealing product. I mean, who doesn't love a Kit Kat? So they made a deal with Philip Morris. However, that deal only lasted two years before Hershey came calling. And Hershey made a deal with Roundtree to get distribution of Kit Kat um, in 1970, I believe. By 1973, Hershey decided to manufacture the product right here in the United States at their Reese's factory where they were making Reese's peanut butter cups. In the later 70s, they signed a deal with Hershey um, to give them the rights to distribute within the United States in perpetuity. That means forever. So Hershey now has the rights to distribute Kit Kat forever and Rolo forever in the United States, everywhere else in the world it's Nestle. However, um, getting back to it, the thing that helped me understand all this is this simple little candy wrapper that I found in this batch of candy wrappers. Without that, I would have never figured it out. And this, because this information isn't anywhere else, the people who would have even known about it, they're long since dead or <laughs> it's a little morbid. <laughs> or, you know, they didn't know. The companies themselves, well, Roundtree's been sold and merged twice, um, so it really comes down to uh, someone like me, some crazy candy geek like me, tracking the information down and figuring it all out, putting these diverse pieces together into this sort of interesting little incomplete puzzle of how this brand comes together. And for me, oh, it's ridiculously exciting. So finding something like this, this pre-Hershey Roundtree Kit Kat wrapper for the U.S. market, that's a mouthful, um, is just tremendously exciting and ridiculously cool. So that's the sort of exciting news. I wanted to share that with you. I sort of wanted to share my process and things that sort of get me fired up about candy history and the research of it because I do spend a lot of time just pouring over all these documents and things that I've got, going through wrappers, um, going through old photos and things that I've accumulated for my collection. And, uh, and so that's the kind of fun stuff that I do. And I love sharing it and I love trying to put it together as I do in these coherent editorial packages on CollectingCandy.com. I think it's called the um, pre-Hershey history of the USA Kit Kat discovered and uncovered. Discovered and uncovered. That is how I get, uh, you know, my reputation as the Indiana Jones of lost and forgotten candy. Jones? Jones? <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed this look back at a, a previously lost and forgotten history of an absolutely classic, amazing brand, the Kit Kat. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the insight and uh you know the knowledge take it with you it's one to grow on and that's one to grow on i'll see you next time thanks everybody have fun how can we possibly have the slightest idea of what to expect